Okay, boys and girls and prospective homeowners, when Miss Gina was here last time from Remax Diamond Realty Guam, she ended with a very, very poignant note. She said that owning real estate is actually supposed to increase your wealth. It's not supposed to send you into the poorhouse, Gina. Not supposed to send you into bankruptcy. I thought that was neat, and I was hoping we can kind of like expound on that because a lot of people here, a lot of people still continue to struggle. You know, the economy isn't, you know, flourishing probably at, like at the rate that it should be right here. A lot of people it, still don't have a lot of money. It isn't, but it's not tanking yeah. either. And most people tend to look at it in, because real estate is a massive investment, um, and it's it's almost like a lifelong investment. You know, you get. You get a mortgage that's, what, 30, 40, 50 years, depending on how you it's, structure it. It's standard practice yep. is it's 30 years. Okay, but um, car ownership, there's no equity in that. It's a depreciable asset the moment you take the car off the lot. Um, Absolutely. If you, go to, if you take out a college loan, you're in debt for a very, very long time. If you don't play it smart, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so, so that is the key point, play it smart. How do we play it smart with real estate? Or at least be conservative. I mean, mm. for me, playing it smart and being conservative go hand in hand. And, and I always encourage people that, come to me to look for real estate, you know, it is a lifelong commitment. I tell them, in my mind, it's kind of like getting married. The minute you say, I do, there are, there are responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And it's a long-term commitment. Um, but I always have seen real estate as an asset. Um, you know, you brought up the word bankruptcy when we were talking about real estate. The B word. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, I've never seen real estate in that light. I encourage people. I, I mean, but, but here's, here, here are the facts. The 2008 financial crisis might disagree with you, but no, but I digress. But that, and that was unique because people were living that, beyond their means okay, and people now, got silly. Now, people that got affected by that were people that were buying over what they were able to buy living at. Living beyond your means. Right. They were living beyond their means, hoping that as the as the real estate prices went up, that they can cash in on that. I'm talking about the average person, the person who's looking to just find a home because, you know, renting is one thing, but anybody who's in the market right now to rent, you go out there and you're going to see rental prices. Yeah, there's a lot of rents on the market right now, but the average price right now is, what, $2,000 a month? For, for a the nice average, place, yeah. yeah, for the average person, could you really afford to buy, to rent every month at 2000 And then here's the other part of that reality. If you're renting and the market continues to go up, which it does, right now we're on an upward trend, do you believe your landlord will keep your rent at 2000 forever because that's what makes you happy? Probably not. Absolutely not. They're in, a person who has a rental property is in the market to make money, you know, of course. That's what, that's what we all want to do is make money. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to penalize them for that. I'm not going to drop them down. Absolutely. Because when you own real estate, I want you to make money. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. So that's what real estate is really about. But it's not about not sacrificing. You're not going to have your cake and eat it too. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, there is compromises. You want to own real estate. Here's what you will get. If you're conservative, your property most likely will appreciate. And if you could afford to buy it, you know, now, then hopefully you will be able to keep that property forever if that's what you choose to do. Mm -hmm. Most people don't. Within a five to seven year period, people have sold that property and they've either, either have moved up to a bigger place or they've moved down because they've decided, hey, wait, you know, I bought this house. It's great. The kids are gone. It's seven years later. Okay, that, that is a mindset I think that's more... that. Correct me if I'm wrong. It skews more towards like a new generation of people. Or pe um, I know the baby boomers. It was always, you buy a house, you have this house for a really, really long time. You pay it off. Hopefully, you leave something for your children. Absolutely. Or you the whole the whole concept of flip it. You know, buy it, and if something bigger, better comes along, I'll just turn it over and I'll uh, I'll make money off that. That my parents and my grandparents did not have that mentality. It was my, just my parents still own their home and they've passed it on, as you said. Yeah. But and you're absolutely right. That is. That is one way to own real estate. I honestly, that's how I own real estate. Mm. I'm not, I mean, I'm only going to sell if it makes sense and if I'm going to make money and if I'm selling it so that I could pick up something else. Right. Okay, that's my mentality. But what I'm, what I'm bringing up are, you know, the generation right now, you might not be able to afford to buy that house that you have in mind, but maybe you could afford to buy a smaller condo. And the only reason I promote that is if you can pay rent, you're paying someone, else, someone else's mortgage. If you have good credit and you can pay rent, you're really paying someone else's mortgage. 
So why not get into something you can afford? Because as the values go up, your equity grows. And so when you're ready to get into a house, perhaps now you've got two or three kids and you're like, you know, now I'm ready to get into a house. That condo that you bought or that small, the two bedroom house that you bought, if there is such an animal these days, you know, we're running out of that product, right? But if you were able to buy something like that and the market continues to go up, guess what? Your property has gone up too. So now you sell the property. Let's say you bought it at 110,000. It's been four or five years. The values have gone up. So now you sell it and you make the difference. What if it's worth 150 now? Who's going to get that difference of the value that has gone up? You are. Mm -hmm. So you take that amount and you buy something a little bit bigger or a little bit better or maybe a a better location for your family. Yeah, because again, I think the mentality, I mean, there's, you know, the two, and I like the way you frame the dichotomy. It's real estate is not supposed to let you go broke. It's actually supposed to... allow you to make money. But a lot of people, I think they're stuck like right in the middle and they say, okay, I know if I get a house, I'm just putting myself into debt. It doesn't mean I'm going to be, you know, eating ramen for the next 40 years. But at the same time, I'm not going to be, you know, living a life of Riley. You know, I see where you're coming from, but as you Uh, pay rent... That's a mentality I see a lot of people having. Yes, but when you're paying rent, aren't you in debt anyway? You're paying that rent every month. Here's the thing. Here's the two things that I guarantee you everybody needs. A place to stay and food to eat. So you're going to have to find a place to stay. And if you're renting, if you're not living in your family home or living with your parents or, you know, if you're not doing that, if you're actually renting to provide that roof over your children's, your head, your children's head, your family, if you're doing that, then you're already in debt, but you can't write off any of that debt, can you? And it's not going to grow. Okay. Well, well, what we've learned today is it's good to make money. And real estate, real estate is a gateway to do that. And so to thank provide you. a home for your family. There you go. Okay. Making money is good, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to make money and show you some commercials. And we will see you next time. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.